Iran is dealing with one of its worst droughts. As officials warn that dam reservoir levels have dropped below 3 percent in Mashhad. The city is home to around 4 million people and relies on four dams for its water supply. This comes as officials in Tehran warned the city could face rolling cuts of water supplies with the five major dams that supply the capital at critical levels. The government is urging people to reduce water consumption or face rationing. For more on this, we can cross to Toronto and bring in Professor Kavi Madani, the director of the United Nations University Institute for Water, Environment and Health, and Iran's former deputy vice president. Thank you so much for joining the program today. Oh, sure. Thanks for the invitation. Now, Iran is facing its worst water crisis in decades. What is causing this devastating drought? A problem like this was not created overnight. It's a product of um, decades of mismanagement, lack of foresight, not understanding that water is at the end a big limit to, to growth and development in a dry region and not planning for this day. Uh, but, but the situation has been exacerbated by the regional drought and the global climate change. The country, uh, as of uh, now is in its sixth year of drought. Um, this is very unusual for Iran and, and certainly parts of Iran that you just mentioned, like Tehran, Mashhad, these are the biggest cities in, in Iran. We have seen situations like this in some smaller areas in the past, but this is the first time that the people in the capital and the biggest cities are dealing with this situation. Now, uh, we touched on it, <clears throat> excuse me, we touched on it a little bit, some of the impact, but what, what has the greater impact been across the country? Um, so it first started with, with um, issues like uh, reduced hydropower production, blackouts, and, and so on. And then uh, when there is water shortage, you first start cutting from the um, environment, the silent stakeholder, um, um, resulting in um, wetlands drying out and, and so on. And then, then farmers would be impacted and industries would be impacted and then, then the people in the urban area. So right now, uh, people are facing reduced pressure, uh, water outages in certain hours and, and government that is, is confused with what to do. Uh, let's not forget that this is a country that has dealt recently with a war. It, the government requires the support of the people, doesn't want to make people angry and, and, and you know, create more stress for them. They were hopeful that um, as we go into the new water year, which started in October, we'll see some rain, but that has not come. So right now, people are very stressed. They don't know what to do because the situation doesn't have a short-term solution. And, and water rationing or reduced water consumption is the only solution at the moment. And, and that's very stressful for, for both sides, I would say, the people and the government that doesn't want to increase the pressure on, on the citizens. Now, as you just mentioned there, this issue of water rationing um, as the only current solution, the government also mentioned the possibility of rolling cuts, water cuts in the capital, and warned that they may even have to evacuate Tehran. Is that a realistic plan? Evacuation is is not realistic as it wasn't during the war. I remember President Trump once asked the to people in Tehran to leave uh, the, the the city, which is impossible. You were talking about millions of people uh, in in that city working, making money, and 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 so on. So so that is not possible. But something that that the government has done in the past is um, shutting down. Um, the, the government for a few days a week. And, and with that, normally there is an encouragement for people to go on vacation, leave the city for a few days. And believe it or not, that is by itself a, a big relief because uh, we know now we're talking about days of water left and in, in any sort of reduced consumption is a huge help. So evacuation or relocation of the capital is not a solution that can be implemented overnight. But, but in, you know, having these measures to encourage people to leave the city might be a small relief, although it's not a fundamental solution. 
Now, you're an environmental scientist. What more could the Iranian government be doing to protect the environment and prepare for future situations like this? Uh, the main thing for Iran is, is that Iran has continued to use more than 90 percent of its water in the agricultural sector um, to produce food and to create employment uh, for, the, for the poor. Um, Iran's need, Iran needs to diversify its economy and reduce um, water consumption in some unnecessary areas, but that is an issue that is linked with the issues of sanctions and its relationship with the West and, and some of the, um, I would say, high-level and macro policies of, of, of the government. Unfortunately, Iran will not have a magic solution for its water sector unless it, it resolves its other, other issues, but in the water the sector we have to reduce the country has to reduce water consumption in the far in the agricultural sector and also in in other sectors but there is um, i would say and and at the high level understand that uh, water is a limit to growth and water availability is declining in the region it's not the issue that this time the enemies have created for iran it's a self produced problem that should be resolved within the boundaries of the country Kavi, thank you so much for joining us and sharing your expertise. That's Kavi Madani, Director of the United Nations University Institute for Water, Environment and Health.